Can We Meet in Nashville? The eighth annual Rays Fundraising Conference hosted by One Cause will be held at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville, Tennessee on September 9th and 10th. Now, when you go to register, don't forget to use the code MISSIONS200 to receive $200 off your registration. You can click the link in the show notes to register. But what is this event all about? Man, it is 700 nonprofit professionals coming together for two days of learning and networking. You have the opportunity to choose from four different education tracks that will feature 30 total interactive sessions. I am so excited to be one of them. Also around some of my favorite people and today's top nonprofit thought leaders. And you don't want to miss, and I don't want to miss, the Fearless Fundraiser Party just for Ray's guests being held at Garth Brooks' new Friends in Low Places venue. So don't forget the discount. Use code MISSIONS200 to receive $200 off registration. Click the link in show notes, and maybe I'll see you there for some good Garth Brooks karaoke. The average person living on the streets goes three to six months without being looked in the eye. And I thought to myself, how is it possible that people are going that long without feeling seen? And I knew I wanted to use my creativity and innovation to create something that would make people feel seen, that would make hope and help free and accessible for every single person on the planet, somehow in some unique way. And when you're in mental crisis, you don't really have the capacity to do the mental gymnastics of figuring out what support do I need? How do we create something that's in the way where people just stumble upon it in their everyday life? They didn't have to put it into a map to figure out where it is or how they got there. It was almost a moment for an encounter for them to feel deeply seen. Hey there, you're listening to the Missions to Movements podcast and I'm your host, Dana Snyder digital strategist for nonprofits and founder and CEO of Positive Equation. This show highlights the digital strategies of organizations making a positive impact in the world. Ready to learn the latest trends, actionable tips, and the real stories from behind the feed? Let's transform your mission into a movement. Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of Missions to Movements. And today I am bringing you a guest from Atlanta, Georgia, from my hood. I recently became a monthly donor to their organization. And so I am so excited to share this wonderful mission with you all and talk about their recent activation, which I thought was so brilliant at South by Southwest, a little event in Austin, Texas that you might've heard of. And it has been years since I have been there. So I'm curious just to see how it has grown, especially within the social impact nonprofit sector. So Gloria Yumana, founder and CEO of The Hope Booth, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. This is actually our favorite podcast. Our team listens to your podcast very often. And I was just talking with one of my leaders today. I said, can you believe the podcast we like always listen to to learn from? I'm about to be on. Like that's <laughs> So thanks so much for having me, Dana, and for being a real supporter of our organization as well. That's awesome. And man, that just goes to show like when I'm recording this show and I'm talking one-on-one with people, I have no idea who the listeners are or how it's being received. And that means so much. And just listener and Gloria to you, I can, I think we can all feel this way yeah. when we send out an email or we're doing an interview or putting out a social post and you're just not sure who it's being seen by or the impact that it's making. So that means the world to know that. So thank you. And just okay. anybody posting content today, know that somebody's seeing it and you're making a difference. So just wanted to say that. And I think it leans really well into, it can provide hope for some people, Mm -hmm. which leads into the conversation about the creation of the Hope Booth. Will you share a little bit with us about you and what sparked this amazing program? Sure, absolutely. So I used to actually lead a collective of creatives where we would travel around the country and at times overseas as well to help other organizations tell their unique stories in very unique ways. So a lot of this was through creative direction for live events and openers, through some spoken word elements. Most of it was for live events. 
And so we would travel pretty regularly doing that. And in 2020, all of our events got canceled because of the global pandemic. And I remember during that time wondering, well, what does moving forward look like? Like, what do we do? Mm. Our whole goal and heartbeat was raising up high capacity creatives to use their creativity to transform their city. And we were doing that through like workshops and retreats. And then on the side, we were doing all of these live events, helping other organizations. And during that time frame, I started to think to myself, what does it look like to use our creativity to impact people where they are, who may never go mm. to another organization's conference again, who may never go to a church again, who may never go to these large gatherings ever again. And during that time frame is when I said to myself, I think our organization needs to pivot from the stage to the streets. What does it look like to oh. people who are right where we are and meeting people where they are? And during that time, I heard this statistic that the average person living on the streets goes three to six months without being looked in the eye. And I thought to myself, how is it possible that people are going that long without feeling seen? And I knew I wanted to use my creativity and innovation to create something that would make people feel seen, that would make hope and help free and accessible for every single person on the planet, somehow in some unique way. I knew that therapists were over capacity, people couldn't afford therapy, and also just the reality that there's a lot of support people need beyond therapy. Therapy is not yeah. all end all be all. There's so many other things people need. And then scientifically, hope actually changes our lives. It changes our mindset, the rewind. Absolutely. And it, it affects so many things. And so we just thought to ourselves, what does it look like to make hope and help free and accessible? We haven't seen that before in our globe. You think about phones and all the apps you can download, but everybody doesn't have a phone. Everybody doesn't have Wi-Fi. Everybody doesn't have the money to download Headspace or Calm or all of these apps that are available. And when you're in mental crisis, you don't really have the mm. capacity to do the mental gymnastics of figuring out what support do I need? Like you can't go right. and look for these things. These things have to come and find you. And so our team has this internal phrase where we say, our goal is to be in the way. How do we create something that is just... I love that. <laughs> How do we create something that's in the way where people just stumble upon it in their everyday life? They didn't have to put it into a map to figure out where it is or how they got there. It was almost a moment for an encounter for them to feel deeply seen. And so that's when we kind of created this idea of the Hope Booth. And ultimately what it is, we remodel old telephone booths and we turn them into these three-minute interactive immersive experiences that are science-backed with the evidence of spreading hope and then connecting users to local help and support within a five-mile radius. So that could look like cost-reduced therapy, Anything. like a shelter. It could look like a food bank, a church, a community group, whatever somebody is in need of. And the whole heartbeat and goal is how do we leverage our community resources that already exist long before I was ever born, way before this idea of the Hope Booth came about, and say, hey, like, we see you. We want to be a catalyst for the work you're doing. And we're the connector. We think the Hope Booth is that connection point for people. And so that's kind of where the heartbeat and the goal of Hope Booth came about. Honestly, I didn't think this was something we would do until maybe 2025 and beyond because it felt so futuristic, honestly. So futuristic, <laughs> way out of my, my own like skill set. I wasn't sure how to create something like that. My brain thought of it, and that was just about it, to be honest. And then the doors, that's where it starts. Yeah, that's where it began. And then the doors of opportunities began to open up to bring this into fruition. And that's how we're here today. It's so cool. Oh my gosh. I just like get all the chills like when you're talking about it. And I love that the first ever Hope Booth is right here in Pond City Market in Atlanta, which is so cool. So the branding, so obviously this podcast, as you know, is marketing focused. And I think what makes a strong first impression oftentimes is branding. Mm -hmm. And holy cow, the branding of the Hope Booth is on fire. Oh. Can you share how was that created? How did you know you wanted to invest in the branding? How did you come up with the look? Like how did all that work being a startup? Yeah, absolutely. And I think we lucked up because we created the branding way before anything else was created. Like before we knew what we were creating exactly with the Hope Booth, 
we sat down and we said, we know how we want this to feel. We know mm. we want this to help people experience. Like when we talk about mental health, sometimes that conversation has a tendency to be very intimidating, so much so that people disengage. And so we wanted to create something that was welcoming. Hope is one of the most joyful things you will ever experience in this life. And so we said, okay, well, how do we be different? Like, how do we help people realize this is a welcoming and inviting and a warm and a fun thing to experience? So the color of hope is actually green. And I think green is a very ugly color. So (laughs) what are the two colors that make green? (laughs) And it's blue and yellow. (laughs) I love it. Perfect. Those two were the color color for me. (laughs) That's amazing. (laughs) And I think it's perfect because like, Yellow is the color of joy and it's hopeful and it's vibrant and it's fun. And then blue is the color of calm and peace. I said, oh man, like joy and peace together really is what hope personifies and embodies. So we said, okay, let's go really simplistic. And then our logo icon was very important to me because we knew from day one, our slogan was going to be where no one goes unseen. How do we help people realize that hope is about making others feel seen. And so that's where we got this brilliant idea to invert our H with two faces that are looking at each other. Mm. And honestly, most people don't recognize it right away. But after a while, they're like, wait a minute, are those two faces looking at each other? And I'm like, yes. (laughs) That represents when you're standing at the Hope booth and you're making that eye contact with the other person on the inside of the hope booth, you are feeling that scientific connection of feeling seen, but also being seen. And so that was our goal and heartbeat of just keeping it fun, vibrant, joy-filled, hopeful, but also very intentional too. I love it. Did you hire somebody to create these things or did you have friends? How did you actually get it off the ground? So remember how I said I used to lead a collective of creatives? That's where these people came in. So there was already one person in particular that lives here in Atlanta that was just, his specialty is logos and branding. And he said, hey, let me tell you what we're trying to do. And this is how you know someone's brilliant at what they do is if they bring something to Gloria and there's no feedback, there's no notes. Like it was (laughs) perfect as is. I said, there's no way that you got it on the first round. We never made any revisions or any notes or changes, he got it right the first time. And it was great. That also means that you probably gave him very clear instructions or the feeling that you wanted it to create. So that probably, I would say, give yourself some credit on the the information that was given to create a really solid product. I'll give myself a little pat on the shoulder there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So all of this was what year? So we built this in 2020, but 2021 is when we debuted. Okay. So a year later debuted. What year was the first Hope Booth live in Pont City Market here in Atlanta? So the Hope Booth at Pont City Market, we installed this past September, 2023. Okay. Oh my gosh. And I know that it's so much work getting all of that approved and regulations in city and it is, and it can't be moved, right? It's like it's drilled in the ground, drilled into the ground. It simply does not move. That's kind of the goal is like, you know, I remember growing up as a child driving throughout Atlanta and it was really easy to find a telephone booth at night. And it was mainly because of the light that shines through it. And I thought yes. to myself, like, that's a perfect depiction of hope. It's light in the midst of darkness. And so that's why we went with that fixture. But we thought to ourselves, you know, when you think about a phone booth growing up, it was there in the community. It wasn't there one day, gone the next. It was embedded right. into the culture and the fiber of that community. And we think that Hope Everywhere. should be the exact same way, like access to hope and help 24 seven around the clock embedded in our culture and community, wherever you are, whether you're at a prison, a school, a hospital, or just walking across the street or walking around Pont City Market. What if there was a hope booth there for you to access everything that you can need to keep going another day? And so that was kind of our, so cool. our goal there as well. But yeah, the, the Pont City Market install has been I mean, mind blowing. We knew there would be high foot traffic there, but not to this extent. We checked some of our analytics about a month ago and we have had over 41,000 users experience the Hope booth there. Amazing. 
with a 77% completion rate going from wow all the way to the end. And then a 73% increase in hope because we figured out how to metricize hope a little bit. And then 56% of the people are actually engaging with that support system and connecting to the local help and resources that we're providing them. And so that's so exciting to see that we yeah. are intentional about making it welcoming and then people are actually using it without us having to be there and say, hey, come try this. And that's where that branding element comes in. I think people come to it out of curiosity, but then they stay out of need and desire. And I think that's the best part there. That's phenomenal. I am so excited. I am so excited for you on the growth. As a digital strategist, I am often asked how to find new donors. And I am an open book to give answers. But my advice is not one size fits all. And that's where I partnered with Donor Perfect to create the personalized growth quiz to develop a donor acquisition plan that is tailored to you. And to get started, all you need to do is answer five quick questions and you will be given podcast episodes, webinars, eBooks, and templates, all tools that were hand selected. Trust me, we hand selected these resources to guide you to the next phase of growth. So, so much time and energy was invested in making sure that we were giving you exactly what you needed at the exact moment that you're in. So click the link in the show notes to take your personalized growth quiz presented by Donor Perfect. Now, I know a little bit about this because I interviewed you for my book on monthly giving programs. But before we dive into the activation at South by Southwest, I would love for you to share what is your goal in the next couple of years as far as increasing the distribution and building of Hope Boost around the country and tell people how to help you. Sure. We have a pretty dangerously audacious goal. <laughs> yes. But I think sometimes the goal has to match the magnitude of the problem. And if it's true that someone is dying by six Amen. 40 seconds, then we've got work to do and we have to move with urgency and with quickness. And so right now we have a goal over the next two years to install 100 Hope Booths. That is all over the world. We see them in hospitals. We see them in airports, we see them in subways, we see them in schools. I think it should be in every school in the country, if I'm honest. Mm. But yeah, we desire to see them pretty much everywhere where people frequent around the globe. And kind of our model of how we do that, we just started this model. We switched it around a little bit and it's a little dangerous. But I will say Dana inspired this and we know we have the ability with what we're doing to build a movement. That's that's what our heartbeat has always been, pioneering a movement yeah. where no one goes unseen. And so building a movement of really generous givers who support us monthly so that we can fund the installs of these Hope Booths without necessarily having to wait for partnerships or sponsors to come around, we can begin to install them a little bit more frequently and rapidly. And so number one, biggest way to support is to become a monthly donor. If you would ask me that question a year ago, I would have not said that. I, would, I probably would have come up with something else, but I think that is one of the most beautiful yes. building that community of people who are with you day in and day out. And then another way that we can get Hope Boots out into the world to fulfill this big vision is large partnerships and large donors, people who can commit to giving a large amount so that we can actually do the work of manufacturing a large amount of Hope Booths in tandem and partnership with Jamestown and JLL, those are some of the real estate property, commercial properties that we partner with to get Hope Booths out into the world so that we don't have to do so much work with permits and figuring out where does yeah. it go. We have the people who've already taken care of all of that so that booths can go out into the world a lot quicker and more efficiently. And so those are some of the ways to support and help. And maybe if you own some commercial real estate and you're like, man, this hope booth can go really great here at this yes. headquarters that I work at or at this school that I work at, then that would be a really great opportunity to get a hope booth in that community as well. I love it. What is the cost of one hope booth to build? Yeah. So the cost to build a hope booth and install it, maintain it the whole nine yards, it ranges between 20 to $25,000. It's really just dependent on if it requires any permits. And if so, what permits it does take. Sometimes installation, depending on where it is, can fluctuate. But we typically say a Hope Booth sponsorship costs right in the range of 20 to 25. Okay. And if somebody's interested in either becoming a member of your monthly giving program or being a sponsor of a Hope Booth, how can they reach you? Yes, you can go to hopebooth.org 
slash donate, hopeboot.org slash the movement or hopeboot.org. <laughs> You'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Now everybody go and do that. Go follow them online. Their social is amazing. Oh, top social channel. Instagram, would you say? I'd say Instagram. We're trying to get more into LinkedIn for sure. And apparently there's so much to learn on Facebook, but we're not there. My mom is, but I'm not yet. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So Instagram, LinkedIn, top two. Yeah. Okay. So I want to jump into your activation at South by Southwest because I thought this was really cool and talking about being somewhere where there's a lot of foot traffic. Mm -hmm. What was the idea behind being there? Yeah. So we knew with where we were at that time, top of March, we had 10 Hope Booths in inventory. And we said, okay, how do we connect with decision makers? Where are they? Like that is how Mm. we expedite the process. Because one of the things we've learned is that the Hope Booth is so experiential that it doesn't really work for me to just explain to you what it is, for you to feel the total effect and impact of it. You have to experience it yourself. And we've never had a decision maker experience it and not make a step towards partnering with us. And so we knew, okay, we need to figure out how to get the Hope Booth in the face of decision makers. We can make really quick and easy movements towards getting a Hope Booth installed in a specific area. And so we did some research and South by Southwest came to mind. I've never been before. Honestly, what I knew of it was that it was a concert, like a big festival. (laughs) I didn't realize what I was getting into. I just knew... From my research, people were like, oh man, it's a concert in tech. And I was like, what does that mean? Like, <laughs> hey, sir. And so I remember going to their website and they had already closed out all of their vendor applications to be a part of oh. the conference. And I said, not a chance. We really need to be there. And so I found the person who was in charge of selecting all of the vendors. And turns out, She was a huge supporter of mental health in general and heard our mission and Mm -hmm. said, oh, we need you guys more than you need us. We would love to have you guys. Here's a discount to pull it off and make it happen. We'd love to put you in our impact pavilion because we think this could actually be impactful for people during our time. I said, oh, sign us up. Okay. We quickly started to prepare what it would look like for us to be there. What makes us stand out? Again, our whole phrase and model of be in the way. We already know the yellow does that. The hope with yellow will do that really easily. And so our setup was pretty simple. We knew we wanted the main attraction to be the Hope Booth, but we also wanted to have a couple different interactive elements that people can just be encouraged by. So we have these little affirmation stickers that say, I am, and their words filled in and a ton of different ones, like maybe 500 that people can select and put on them and keep with them or put in their bag and someone that they're reminded of. And then we also had some merch and some like mental health statistics and information for people. And it was incredible. We had about 650 people come to our booth and I mean, even other booths were like coming over because they were like, this line is always so long. We want to know what you guys are doing. We could see see the yellow sign from way on the other side. It was so easy to spot you guys. And so it was awesome because we ended up meeting some of our largest partners today because of March, which was our goal. We connected with some people from Berkshire Hathaway. We connected with some people who lead foundations that really prioritize mental health and have been looking for amazing creative solutions. And so it did exactly what we needed. And now we have a Hope Booth that's coming in Colorado at the top of July because of South by Southwest as well. And so some really exciting things. Yeah. Happen. If you're listening, have you ever thought South by Southwest was just a concert? It's not, turns out. <laughs> um, no, it's not. I see a lot of decision makers there who want to make a change in the world, but don't know how. And so they're looking yes. at people who are doing the work already. Yes. But the brilliant thing is how you put together the experience for what you talked about. People could see the line. You made it something that people wanted to come and check out and experience for it to stand out. South by Southwest has a ton of people. The last time I went was when Meerkat was announced. If you remember Meerkat, it was (laughs) the first version of Lives. My goodness. (laughs) And... It was crazy. The whole place lit up with everybody testing out Meerkat. Everybody just go Google it if you don't know what in the world I'm talking about. But it was before Twitter Live, it was before Facebook Live, any of those things. And I was there. They have a whole sports section. 
Mm-hmm. And at the time I was working for a company that was like sports and entertainment based and my job was new business. And I lost my voice <laughs> at South by Southwest. <laughs> you talk to so many people and having so many discussions. It's a brilliant place to be. And I think mm-hmm. even more so now in later years, their social impact and what they're looking to support for nonprofits has increased. Yeah. And so the other thing is, I love the fact that you didn't see the closed application on the website and just give up. Yeah, truly. I mean, we knew we needed to be there. That was it. And we also just know the value that Hope Booth brings and offers. That's just unique in itself. Yeah. I think us even being there, with that, we didn't have any crazy lights or anything as cool as a lot of what some of the other stuff was there. But the Hope Booth itself speaks for itself. It's very welcoming. You're wondering what in the world is this? And I think that was the heartbeat of how do you create something unconventional in the framework of something familiar? Because then you get, Mm. they know what a telephone booth is, but what is this? Like this is, you don't use telephone booths anymore. And so the new generation doesn't know what a telephone booth is. I learned that as well. (laughs) (laughs) Like, What is a telephone booth? I was like, wait, Google it maybe. (laughs) That's so funny. No, that is true. That's an uh, education curve for the next generation who never saw these things at every airport and every street, like all over the place, which is comical to think about, but true. Amazing. Okay. So 650 people like coming into the booth. Did you grab, of course, I go to thinking about growing your monthly giving program. Did you get all of those email addresses? Oh, we sure did. We, we are big data people. Like this is how okay. we know if the experience we created was good. So we had everybody fill out surveys as well. So we had their emails or contact cool. and we have just started pushing out comms to them about joining our monthly donor community and they are joining, which is really awesome. people want to be a part of what you're creating. And so making sure we're doing our due diligence of extending the invite is a really big deal. And so that was really exciting. We also got some new science board members from South by South, cool. which was awesome as well. Okay. And since it's the month of May and we are in mental health awareness month, I know there's something exciting that you're putting together. Would you share it with everyone? Absolutely. So this month we are doing probably the craziest thing we've ever done in efforts to move from awareness to action. And our monthly donor community has fundraised enough money to install a hope booth, which is the also celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. And what we're going to do is really fun. So on social media, we are doing a giveaway, but not a giveaway like your typical giveaway. There's no shirts involved here. Instead, we're giving away a hope booth to the city with the most comments under this giveaway post. And the goal is to build an entire community and momentum around this fun idea of making hope and help accessible in a community with a hope booth permanently installed into the ground there. And so I'm really excited to see how all of that goes down. Oh my gosh. Brilliant. I am going to link to the post in the show notes so everyone can go. This is so fun. I'm so excited and I'm so proud of the community that has done this. Gloria, you have this contagious, hopeful energy. You do. Like you want to be around you. Like I want to hear what's going on. So I think that's contagious and proves the point about what you're doing of why you're doing it. So I am so excited just to be a tiny little part in making the Hope Booth possible and grow. So I would like to ask you, where can, again, where can listeners specifically connect with you? Is LinkedIn the best place if they want to learn more? Yeah, LinkedIn is definitely the best place. Okay, perfect. I think LinkedIn is just my name. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Yes, it should definitely be just your name. I'm sure that it is. I think that because that's where we connected too is on LinkedIn. Yeah, except we had been stalking you long before. (laughs) (laughs) I appreciate the stocking. Thank you very much. (laughs) Gloria, it was so nice to chat with you. Y'all don't miss out. Go check out the Hope Booth. Search for it online. You will find it. It is so cool. Be a part of her movement. And in the my book coming out, you're going to hear more about the monthly giving program that she's building. And I'm just so impressed with everything that you've created. Your impact report that you sent to us as donors is beautiful just so well done. So I think if you're a nonprofit leader, connect with her. If you are somebody looking to give, connect with her. If you know somebody in the mental health community or the real estate, like she was talking about, connect with her. 
this is where I hope connections just continue to form. So please don't be a passive listener on this one. Hopefully it does create some hope, but please reach out and make these connections. So Gloria, thank you again so much for being here and what you're doing. Thank you. Can you tell I love talking all things digital? To make this show better, I'd be so grateful for your feedback. Leave a review, take a screenshot of this episode, share it on Instagram stories and tag positive equation with one E so I can reshare and connect with you.